In this third part of customizing the video controls, I will demonstrate how you can show the current play time and the full video duration time the way YouTube videos display video current time and duration. We can use properties of the video object and convert them to minutes and seconds for display purposes and it's pretty easy. The first thing we're going to need is two elements to show the current play time and the video full duration time. So let's go under the slider that was our seek bar and let's put in a span element with an ID equal to current time text and then make sure you close that span element then you can copy that span element put another one right next to it with a forward slash in between the two and this one you just change the C to a D and that stands for duration time text so you have current time text and duration time text and that's where we're going to render the current time and duration time now we can go ahead and collapse our HTML because we don't need to look at that anymore and we're going to open up our script code. This is the same code that we left off with in video number two. So let's go up to the top where we're initializing our variable names. And we're going to put cur time text and dir time text. Then we're going to set object references for those two span elements. So we can copy that one, paste it two more times, and just take this cur time text, put it right here, and then right there actually put it right there and right there and then dir time text which is your duration time text is gonna go right under that so now you have two object references for those span elements now since we already have a time update function that's gonna fire off every time the time updates for the video object it's a function called seek time update that we put in in the last video so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead down here into seek time update function and we're gonna add the code that we need to put the duration time and the current play time into those display elements. Okay, first I'm just going to pop in all of the code that makes this possible. Then we're going to check and see if it works. And if everything's working right, I'll explain every single line to you. And this is the new code that I just put in. And let me let me go ahead and change the text color on that so you guys can see it a little bit better. So I'll go up into my CSS and inside of the video's control bar let's see if I can just set the color temporarily here to something like a light gray now let's render that in our test browser so you see you have current play time which is on the left and then you have your duration that's the full duration of the video and if you drag your playhead you can see how the little current time changes as you drag and I'll show you guys how to make these double zeros if you want the minutes to be double zeros okay now let me explain this little bit of code that I put in place to make that possible the first thing I did was I wanted to get a variable for the current minutes so I took the vid dot current time and divided it by 60 and then we use math dot floor to round down that number because it's going to be a decimal number and you don't want a decimal number now to get the current play seconds, we're going to take the vid.currentTime minus the current minutes times 60. And we use math.floor on that as well to round down. Now to get the full duration minutes, we use video.duration property divided by 60. Then to get the duration full seconds, we use the video duration minus duration minutes times 60. And it helps if you have decent math skills when you're trying to program things like this. Now this one I also used math.floor. And then this one I just used math.round. And you can use math.round here as well. You can also use math.floor here. But I, I decided to use math.round. That way it goes naturally rounded. And it's not pushed to the floor. When you use math.seal it'll round up. When you use math.round it rounds naturally. Whichever way it should round. So there's different math methods that you can use in here in place of the others, depending on what you think makes the most sense. And you can look into JavaScript, floor, seal, and round to see how they all work. And I have some information about the math object at developphp.com if you want to dig further. It's in the JavaScript library. So now, in order to put a zero in front of the current seconds, if they happen to be a singular digit, like from zero through nine, you want to put a zero in front of it so there's not a single digit there. So you say if the current seconds is less than 10, if it's less than double digits, 
then you're going to say current seconds gets a zero attached to the front of it. If it's zero through nine, you want to put a zero in front of it. That way it's double digits in that slot. Then the same for the duration seconds. And now if we look at this, if we look at the player, you'll notice that we have only single digits for our minutes. And you might want double digits there as well. So I'm just going to take these two if conditions right here. And actually we can put those all on one line. They don't have to take up three lines for that little tiny condition. So I'm going to pack those into their own line. And then I'm going to copy those two lines. I'm going to put two more right under them. And then we'll take the current minutes variable. And we'll say if current minutes is less than 10, current minutes is equal to current minutes with a zero attached to the front. And the same thing for duration minutes. If duration minutes is less than 10, then duration display is going to have a zero attached to it as well. Okay? Does that make sense? Then all we do is we take the current time text, inner HTML for that span element, and we add whatever display, whatever we want to put inside of it. In this case, we want current minutes with a colon, and then on the other side, current seconds. And then for the duration time text, inner HTML, we put the duration minutes, colon, and then duration seconds. So let's see if that gives us more zeros. So now you see what you have here? So now you have more of a standard type display. Now what I'll do is change the video. So let me go down here to my HTML and I'm going to change this to a longer video that I have in the same directory. And I named it other video. So let me check that out. Hey, 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 welcome. So you see I have more time there. I have a whole lot of minutes in this video. It's 14 minutes, 57 seconds. And as the playhead rolls along, you can see the current time rolls along just nicely see no problemo and it looks like 1456 might be the end so do you see how I'm using uh, let's go back up here math.round here you could put math.floor and then refresh hey 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 welcome to and let's pull it all the way to the end and now they match so depending on what kind of logic you want you can use different ways of rounding that number. You can round it to the floor, round it to the ceiling, or you can round it natural. Okay, so that shows you how to get YouTube style display time for your custom design video element controls. And we're just gonna keep banging right along. We started with the pause play button, then we put in a seek slider. Now we have our display time, and what comes next to that? Now we have to mess with volume, full screen button, and things like that and those will be in the next video. I'm just gonna do one display component for each video. First video was the pause play button, second video was the seek slider, third video is our display time, so I'll probably have five videos in total. The next videos will go fast. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson.